On my hand here is the Fujifilm GF45mm RWR lens with a f2.8 aperture. And if you like 35mm lenses and you are into the GFX system, this is the lens for you. Hello everyone, I'm Richard and welcome to ZP Productions and today will be a review of this lens here. This is the Fujifilm GF 45mm f2.8 RWR where R means that it has an aperture ring which is very similar to every other GFX lens out there and WR means it is weather resistance. Now just to start off, this is my second most used lens in my GFX series of lenses. I love it and today will be a review on it. As with all my reviews, I will split it into three parts. Firstly, we'll talk about physical quality. Secondly, we will talk about its autofocus. And lastly, we will talk about its image quality. So let's start off with its build quality, its physical qualities itself. Now, the Fujifilm GFX lenses are really well built. They usually come with metal body, they are weather resistant, and they are really durable. And this lens is no different. So as a GFX lens with a WR, which means weather resistance rating, it is a full metal body lens with aperture ring, focus ring, and a lens that doesn't extend and rotate. Not only that, it has a gasket at the back and the back element is not too front forward and allows you to put your lens like this. So this is the physical quality and uh, if you ask me other than that, just to note that this guy has a focus ring but this focus ring is, if you ask me, relatively useless. This is electronically coupled lens and without any body, you cannot manual focus. And the aperture ring wise, maybe it's because of the age, I own this lens quite a long time since it first came out. So it's a bit loose to me and many a times, I have a tendency to hit it and f2.8 becomes something like f3, not something desirable. In terms of front filter thread, this guy has a 62mm front filter thread, so it's a small one. Uh, you can put any form of, fil of filter on it, doesn't make a difference, doesn't seem to cause any vignetting. And it comes with a hood too, this is a petal hood. Now the only problem with this petal hood is that it's a bit loose to me, and sometimes I do hit it and it rotates slightly and it causes vignetting in my photos, and I don't notice it normally till like the end of the shoot. So that is the only problem with the hood itself. And that a very well built lens. Now, just to note, this lens is quite large for its capabilities and its focal range. So for f2.8 lens with 45mm, so if you convert the full frame, this is like a 35mm with a f2 aperture. This is a really huge lens. Now, if I compare it side by side with a full frame equivalent, notice how much bigger it is and how much smaller is the full frame equivalent. But Fujifilm gives you a lot more optical quality and I'll talk about that in my later image quality section. And if you look, the front element of this lens is so much larger than the front element of this and this is pretty much where all the money went to. So let's talk about autofocus first before we enter into image quality. So next up, autofocus. Now autofocus is split into two parts. Firstly is the speed, secondly is the accuracy. There's nothing much to it. Uh, this is not an LM lens and LM means linear motto. Usually for the LM lenses, they do focus faster like this 50mm f3.5. This guy does focus faster. So if you ask me, this lens is middling of the bunch in terms of autofocus speed. It is fast because it is not a very uh, you know, long lens. It's only a 35mm equivalent or 45mm on GFX term. So it's not a really long lens. So it does focus fast because of that virtue. And... Uh, if, if, if in terms of the rest of the lenses in the range, I think the 3264 does focus slightly faster and so does the 110 in good light. But in normal conditions, this guy is the middle of the pack, not the fastest, not the slowest. I think the slowest lens goes to this lens here. This is the 63mm lens and this is the slowest lens. The good thing is that this lens doesn't you know, uh, extend and contract during focusing, so the speed is not hampered by it. It is internal focusing in nature. Uh, but in terms of focusing accuracy, this lens is fantastic. I think this lens is more accurate than the uh, 3264 or the 45 100. Both of them has the 45 mm equivalent inside. Partially, maybe because it's f2.8, so the sensor has more light to work with. But if not, normally I would say as I tend to have lesser soft shots with this lens than the other two. The other two, if you ask me, maybe out of 10 shots, I think one or two shots will be soft, while in this lens, I think only one shot, less than a shot out of 10 shots will be soft. 
So in terms of accuracy, this guy is a lot better, if you ask me. Uh, that's about it for autofocus, and uh, there is nothing much to it. On the GFX 100, you probably can shoot straight with it quite safely. You probably won't have much missed shot, and you can probably take shots of people walking around. But on a 50 and a 50 R 50s like this one here, I think it is really really hard. Just to note, uh, it's because of the nature of the autofocus system on those cameras. So the next one we are talking about is image quality. But before we start, let's take a look at a few photos that I shot with this lens. Earlier, this lens is my second most used lens, therefore I have a lot of photo shoots with it. I love it a lot and uh, I usually only use it at f2.8 because if I'm not using an f2.8 or the shoot is not slated for 2.8, normally I'll just use the 3264, which is a much more convenient lens. And in terms of optical quality, I would say it's quite similar. So the optic quality of this lens, now I have used quite a bit of 35mm, I have used the RF 35 1.8, I used before the old 35 f2 Canons. I used before the O35 1.4 Canon and I also used before Sigma 1.4. I also touched before, if I'm not wrong, the Nikon 35mm F2s. Now, all of these lenses are just inferior to this lens when it comes to optical quality. I'm pretty sure of it because if you look at the shots that I have shown you, in fact, now let, let me show you a few shots, zoom in 100%. And if you look at it, there is no CA, it is perfectly sharp. And I will tell you that now, this sharpness and no CA extends all the way to the corner. In fact, at a very, very corner, there is some slight drop of sharpness, but it is way, way better than any other 35mm out there. Therefore, optics-wise, this is fantastic. It doesn't really have any CA anywhere in terms of lateral. It does have some longitudinal CA. It is very rare and only happens in the most extreme conditions, such as bokeh balls. And when it does happen, it's probably like one pixel, so you have to zoom in really insanely much for a GFX series camera, which is at least 50, if not 100 megapixels. So it is very good, very controllable. And I would say as compared to the other 35mm lens, this is extremely sharp, extremely CA corrected. Uh, I really do not know what else to say other than it is fantastic in terms of optics. Uh, in terms of bokeh wise, it's also quite good. You notice that some of these shots have, do have bokeh and if you look it, the bokeh is very smooth. Nothing too jarring and partially that's because I think there is uh, no CA, not much CA in the bokeh itself normally. So they don't create any funky edges and the bokeh balls normally look quite good. It doesn't have the swirly bokehs in a lot of the 35mm lenses out there. Overall, I think this is a fantastic lens in terms of image quality and there is really nothing much to complain about for this lens. So it goes on to the last part, which is my thoughts. Uh, and I'll say as straight away, the immediate conclusion is if you own the GFX series of cameras or you are looking to buy the GFX series of cameras and love 35mm, there is nothing to talk about. Just get it because firstly, the equivalent other lenses are such as the zooms. They are one stop slower. And if you ask me in terms of optical quality, they are very similar, but this guy is probably slightly sharper all around, slightly contrastier all around. Um, and then if you talk about uh, comparison to other full frame lenses, I think this is as good as it gets. In fact, the only other top end full frame lens of 35mm that I have not tried is the 35mm 1.4 version 2 for Canon and it is said to be fantastic but you know I compared to shots online and I think that in terms of CA control this guy may still be better than that lens in terms of sharpness too this guy probably is better too 
that's about it. You know, uh, the only other thought that I have to say before you know, we end this is the price. As with every other GFX equipment, it is not cheap. This lens is 1.7K USD today because there is no discount and normally when there is discount, it drops to about 1.3. In Singapore, the street price is about 2,000 USD. Now, to really put in perspective for what it delivers, a 35mm equivalent with an aperture of f2, now this RF lens here is only $650 Sing dollars, uh, or if in USD terms, I believe it's about 400 something USD. So this lens here is easily 3 to 4 times the price depending on the offer that is available. For an equivalent lens, this is really, really expensive when it comes to the terms of looks. Now, if you zoom in and then you talk about bokeh, you talk about CA, of course, this lens is superior. The glass in front is bigger to start with. But, you know, for what it delivers in terms of general image look, uh, I think that if you come from a full frame, this is extremely an uh, exorbitant lens for f2.8. Now, compared to the F1.4s, of course, this guy is quite affordable. In fact, the Canon 35 F1.4 is more expensive than this lens significantly. Uh, but that being said, you know, that guy is a 1.4, it's the latest, and Canon lenses are never cheap. So, I think this guy is quite a good deal if you are just looking at image quality, image perfection. I think this guy is as good as it gets. So, that is pretty much it for my review today. I think this lens is fantastic. 35mm equivalent for the Fujifilm GFX medium format camera. And that's about it. I hope you like this review here because I do enjoy talking about this lens. It is my second most used lens. And you know, if you want to see more of such review, do like and subscribe. If not, see you next time. Bye-bye.